Thanks everyone for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here today. Uh, this shouldn't take more than an hour and I promise you it will save lives. But don't just take my word for it. Let's welcome our first speaker, Mike Buckley from Firehouse 111. Mike. Thank you, Chief Freeman. <clears throat> the biggest threat to the health and safety of firefighters today isn't a raging fire, or dangerous rescue attempts, or that mystery casserole the previous shift left in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> it's cancer. One in three firefighters will be diagnosed. And last year I found out I'm one of them. This past Christmas, my wife got me a new pair of running shoes. They're real nice, expensive, the kind that connects to an app on your phone, gives you all kinds of unnecessary data. <laughs> I'm wearing them right now. I know it's not regulation, please don't, don't write me up for it. I just wanna enjoy them as much as I can in the next six months or so, because uh, well, that's about how long I have left to live. Now, I plan on fighting this as hard as I possibly can, but odds are I won't get to spend the next Christmas with my family or see my baby girl grow up. Uh, cancer is an epidemic in the fire service and our everyday risks continue to grow. From the carcinogens we breathe in and absorb at fire scenes, to the diesel exhaust fumes from our very own rigs. We need to limit our exposure.
Wayne uh, is the assistant chief for Willowvale Fire Company, and he's been there since 1998. I mean, it's an honor that I can say that my husband is a volunteer firefighter, as much as it can be hard, you know, for doing something, and then he gets up and leaves, or um, middle of the night, it's three in the morning, and the pager goes off, there's a fire, he goes. Wayne is probably one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Um, about what he does. He would rather help you than probably help himself. Um, he's probably, he, I don't think he ever knew how good a father he would be, but he's probably the best. <laughs> Wayne worked nights, so he was tired all the time anyways, so he was just more tired than normal. Um, then he got a cold that we just kind of never went away. And so I'm like, okay. So he started to get swollen lymph nodes. We went in to see the surgeon. He sat us down and he said, I hate to tell you this, but your husband has cancer. Wayne has ALL, which is acute lymphoblastic leukemia or lymphoma. I never saw somebody in so much pain. It's awful. It's, um, it's awful. It's, to see somebody in pain that you can't help being a wife, being a nurse, it's awful. When you have a family member diagnosed with cancer, it's not just that person going through it, it's the family going through it. And at the time, it was Wayne and I. The fire department gave Wayne a purpose. It, he always says, even when the pager goes off in the middle of the night, and I'm like, are you really going? He'll say, it makes me feel normal. It makes me feel like a human, like I'm helping somebody else. I don't go to the fire department and they look at me like, I'm a cancer patient. I have purpose. Life now is very busy. We have a beautiful boy, he's eight months old, named Ethan. Terrifying feeling of leaving Diane and, you know, not being around for her was extremely hard. It, it means the world to you. I mean, you can never repay these people. I, I can never repay her. There's no greater feeling to know that you have that support and there's no way to ever express or show somebody the gratitude you have for it besides telling them thank you a thousand times, but that can only go so far. Tony's been volunteering for 10 years. Uh, he volunteers for the Skylar Volunteer Fire Company. Tony is a caring, loving, He's incredible. I have to say it was one of the calls where the house was a fully involved structure fire. They said that there was a couple people that were trapped. When that came over the pager, when they go in, you don't know if they're gonna make the right call to come out on time, you know, if the building's gonna collapse on them. Daddy is their hero. Um, it's tough on them, but our youngest uh, wants to be just like him, wants to be a firefighter. He called me and he said, uh, my doctor called me. He's like, and um, I have cancer. We actually didn't say anything to our kids for about maybe a month after. When we told them, they were devastated. Everybody was devastated. The first time Tony had cancer, it was uh, stage three. They took out 27 lymph nodes. Um, the second time he had cancer, it metastasized to his liver. And the third time, which is now, um, it's stage four. We've been traveling to New York City every two weeks. The volunteer fire service has helped our family extremely. They've always been there for us. They've been there for us day one. I don't know what I would do, you know, if I lost them. I have no idea. We always say why. Why him? Why anybody? But why three times? I'm scared. Um, every time, most, most frequently the last time, I was angry, I was mad. Why? Why me? Why anybody? I've always been out there to help everybody else, and this time I had to ask for help. 
when he was on the chemo and still on the chemo. And the first time around, you know, I didn't say it to him. I, you know, lied to him about it. I said it to my mom, and then he looked sick, and he did. It's a struggle every day. You just gotta, you know, look forward to the next day and just hope that, you know, it will 